Do you think that you are promoting unattainable standards of beauty in any way? No, I don't. I think the only thing we're really trying to represent is just having the most healthy, ver like being the most healthy version of yourself. I've had one nose job, Dr. Raj Kanodia, and everyone gets so upset, like, why don't I talk about it? No one's ever asked me. We get up, we do the work, we work out. I had one of my first kisses and a guy said to me, oh my God, you're such a good kisser, we have such small lips or something like that. <laughs> oh. And then from, wow. then from then on, I felt unkissable. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Exposing SMG. It's officially the end of an era, and that is the Keeping Up with the Kardashians TV show era. The Kardashians slash Jenner gang revealed that the iconic show will end with its 20th season, which aired on March 18th, 2021. Keeping Up with the Kardashians has been airing for as long as we can all remember, and now that it's finally coming to an end, the Kardashians had a sit down to catch up with Andy Cohen, and in this video we are talking about the most shocking things they revealed in their two-part series special. Don't forget to watch till the end because we've kept the most scandalous tea for last. Let us know down in the comments below how you feel about the Kardashians slash Jenner clan, and how you feel about the show finally coming to an end. Tell us which point or topic from this video that you liked best or thought was the most shocking. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe for more. Number 1. Claiming they have not set an unrealistic beauty standard. I know, I know, I also rolled my eyes. As I'm sure many of you know, a lot of people are crediting the Kardashian family for setting unrealistic beauty standards towards their massive audiences. When asked if the family believes they are promoting unattainable standards of beauty in any way, Kim jumped in quickly saying, No, I don't, because I think we get up, we do the work, we work out. No, I don't, because I think we get up, we do the work, we work out, you know, Many people were upset by this because they claimed that their bodies did not come from the work of a gym membership, and the more they push this narrative, the more people will falsely believe it. I'm on the fence about this topic. While I don't believe in blaming other people for our insecurities and triggers, I can't help but think that the Kardashian family is doing more harm than good when it comes to talking about this topic. The way this family talks about this topic is quite unsettling. It's not, don't be fooled by the glamour and fame, we still have our insecurities even while we work out and put in the work. It's more of, it's your fault for feeling this way, not us. You're not the one working out, so don't blame us. I don't know, it's the way they answer this question that seemed a bit passive. What do you guys think? Kendall then jumps in to say that they all enjoy the process of taking care of themselves and being fit and healthy. This is why all of them look the way they do. Yeah, it gets worse, because Kendall then says the only thing they are promoting is being the healthiest version of yourself. Right. We all really enjoy taking care of ourselves and being healthy. So I think if anything, the only thing we're really trying to represent is just having the most healthy, ver like being the most healthy version of yourself. The reason why this comes off as shallow is because the Kardashians don't even take their own advice when it comes to this. Many viewers were annoyed by this saying that it's easy to quote unquote put in the work when you have personal chefs, personal trainers, memberships to the most lavish gyms and a whole glam team. While I understand this is true, I don't think it's their fault entirely that they are blessed with things other people don't have, but I do understand the way they come off is very annoying. A large part of it may be surgery, but I do think they are genuine when they talk about working out and trying to be healthy. What do you guys think about this topic? How are the Kardashians to blame for setting unrealistic beauty standards? Number 2. Khloe Kardashian admits to having a nose job. I think what's most shocking about this isn't the nose job, but rather admitting to getting one. As we previously mentioned before, the Kardashians are notorious for calling their procedures natural and crediting it all to a gym. 
The one thing I thought was very interesting was when she spoke about her nose job, she said, everyone gets upset about it, but no one has ever asked me about it. Had one nose job, Dr. Raj Kanodia, and everyone gets so upset, like, why don't I talk about it? No one's ever asked me. You're the first person in an interview that's ever asked me about my nose. I've done. Um, am I the only one that thinks this doesn't make a whole lot of sense? Chloe would have gotten angry if any interviewer randomly asked her if she ever got plastic surgery, let alone dialed it down to a nose job. Just look at how upset she gets when fans question her Photoshop skills. While Chloe goes on to say she has some other cosmetic treatments, such as injections, the one thing she's never tried is Botox. It just doesn't sit well with her. Chloe admitted that during the start of the show, she was very secure in herself. But as the show went on, she became insecure because of what the public was saying about her. I definitely feel for them because being under that type of spotlight would make anyone insecure, especially if you are constantly being compared to your sisters. It's definitely not easy feeling good about yourself when you have so many people analyzing your body and giving you their opinions about it. I think it takes a lot of courage to speak up to the public about your insecurities and procedures you've had, especially when the rest of your family is staying silent on the topic. Chloe also started talking about the toll it took on her mental health when the public continued to question who her real father is because she didn't look like her sisters, Kim and Courtney. What do you guys think about this topic? Number 3. Kris Jenner reveals who is the easiest daughter to manage and who is the hardest. Throughout the years, we have all spoken about Kris Jenner and the possible psychological trauma it must put on a family to have a momager. We always wondered who is Kris Jenner's favorite daughter and many of us guessed it was whichever daughter was making the most money. Throughout the years, the Kardashians have joked about Kim or Kylie being the favorite duo because of their immense success, but Chris actually revealed that Kendall is the favorite because she's the easiest to work with and manage. This does make sense because Kendall is pretty straightforward and she wants to reach the end goal the same way Chris envisions it, but I am quite shocked that Kendall was dubbed the easiest to work with. I feel like we always have to watch Kendall throw teenage tantrums, and even as she grows into adulthood, we still see her snapping at family members. So I was surprised to hear that Chris had the easiest time managing her. In my opinion, I would have thought it was Kylie. She seems very easygoing, but this just proves that things behind closed doors are different from the way we perceive them. What do you guys think about Kendall being the easiest to manage? If you didn't know the answer to this question and had to guess, which sister would have you picked? The toughest to manage award goes to, as we can all guess, Kourtney Kardashian. This is definitely not shocking, especially if you've been keeping up with the Kardashians and their family drama. It always seems to be Kourtney who is not agreeing with the rest of the gang. She seems very opinionated when it comes to not putting in effort for work, and she gets very triggered at the slightest of conversation. We have seen Courtney being a real struggle during the show, not wanting to do photo shoots, not wanting to show up for events, and she just seems like someone who doesn't like to do a whole lot in comparison to her sisters who want to go above and beyond. And that's fine because she's doing her own thing and quote unquote, just living life. But we can all see how she clashes with the rest of the family who aren't satisfied with that type of work ethic. Number 4. Kylie Jenner's lip kit empire can all be traced back to an unsuccessful first kiss. It seems almost ages ago when the entire world was obsessed with uncovering the controversy of Kylie Jenner's lips. If you were around social media during the years 2013 and 2014, you would remember that a huge controversy when it came to Kylie Jenner were her lips and if she had gotten lip injections to make them the size they were or if she was simply just overlining them. The more Kylie said these were her natural lips and she was simply overlining them, the more the internet got angry and went to lengths to prove that they were lip injections. In the reunion interview, Kylie talked about not realizing she had small lips until a boy she kissed made a comment on them. She said, I had really small lips, and I didn't ever think about it until I had one of my first kisses, and a guy said to me, oh my god, 
You're such a good kisser, but you have such small lips. I had really small lips, okay. and I didn't ever think about it until I had one of my first kisses and a guy said to me, oh my God, you're such a good kisser, we have such small lips, or something like that. <laughs> oh. She said from then on, she was very uncomfortable with her lips and believed she was unkissable. From then on, I felt unkissable. She said she grew a very big insecurity over her lips because of that comment and she constantly obsessed over them. And that's actually how she got obsessed with makeup. Because she would overline her lips and it would make her feel so much better and confident. Kylie even made a joke and said that she should name a lip kit after this guy because he really set her on this path to experience her love for makeup would overline my lips and it just made me feel confident. We should name a lip I kit after don't him. don't think about it now. Yeah, you should. Seriously. You should do a collab with him. I personally believe that even if this guy had never said anything, Kylie still would have found her way towards makeup and possibly still would have been insecure about her lips just from the pressures of social media. What do you guys think? Number five. Kylie's thoughts about marriage and keeping her pregnancy a secret. One of the biggest shockers for me was when I found out Kylie was pregnant because she was really young and was still on this path of experiencing fame in a more adult way. And I actually did like her more after she became a mom. I feel like she was less shallow and obsessed with the idea of being famous. I mean, we all remember the Snapchat she would post of her walking out into a sea of paparazzi. I feel like after the shocker of becoming a mom at a young age, she sort of had a reality check but those are just my two cents on that topic. When it came to keeping the pregnancy a secret, Kylie said she shared a lot of things to the public in the past and was really young when she got pregnant. And it was a lot for her personally at the time and she just didn't know how to bring that to the public. Kylie was definitely scared and stressed, so she did what she thought would be best at the time and didn't worry about the public until she knew she was ready to tell them, which I think is a smart thing for her to do. When the topics of relationships and marriage came about, Kylie said, I'm not thinking about marriage now, but I hope to get married one day. And while there is no confirmation on them getting back together, seeing as they still live in separate houses, sources have confirmed that they are being romantic with each other again. We wish them the best. Well, there you guys have it. Five things the Kardashian slash Jenner clan revealed when they had a sit down for their reunion interview. Let us know down below if you want to see a part two for this because there was just so much tea to spill. Let us know your thoughts about this whole interview and what other videos you want to see next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.